I'm old school, I got all my phone, I'm on paper. <laughs> okay, hey everyone. Hey. 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 <laughs> my New York Times Guild colleagues, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicole Hannah Jones. I'm a staff writer Woo! at the New York Times Magazine. And a proud, proud member of our Guild Unit Council. Yeah. Yeah. So like all of you, I spent last week hoping that the company would take the necessary steps to offer us a fair and equitable deal after 20 months without a contract. But instead they chose not to listen to our collective requests. So today I'm truly, I mean truly honored. I don't, I don't ever come in this building anymore it seems like, but I'm truly honored to stand in solidarity with 1,100 of my guild colleagues today. I'm not angry, I'm just deeply disappointed uh, by our company's negotiation team. But I've been equally awestruck and inspired by the tireless efforts of our bargaining committee. If you're on the bargaining committee, could you just shout right now, please? <laughs> They're the ones who have been in that room fighting every day. For the rest of us, I just show up and make a nice speech. So truly appreciative of that. And all of my fellow guild members, and all of you who are here today who have been working in ways big and small to fight for a better workplace for everyone, for all of our colleagues. It's important to note, as you all know, that this is not a decision that the guild came to lightly. But when asked to sign the pledge, I, like so many of you, did not hesitate. And I want to tell you why, briefly, it's so important to me that I sign this pledge and that I'm here today. First of all, I come from a long line of union members and activists. I grew up, literally grew up attending union meetings with my mom, who was president of AFSCME Local 3289 in Iowa. My father was a member of the Amalgamated Transit Union, and my grandfather grandfather was a member of IBEW because they believed that workers should have a seat at the table. And these were working class folks who understood that if workers could not bargain about their conditions, they would never make an equal pay for a good day's work. So solidarity is the only way for us all to collectively rise. We didn't have a union at any newspaper that I ever worked for before I came to the New York Times. This was the first chance I ever had to actually bargain for my working conditions. Speak louder? Yeah. I'm not louder? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No one has ever said I wasn't loud enough before. Okay. So what I said was, I've never had a chance to work at a newspaper or any job that had a union until I came to the New York Times. And so as soon as I had a chance to join the Guild, of course I signed up. And it's that same spirit in which I was raised, raised in a union family, raised in people who believe that workers should have a say in the conditions, that I joined the union, uh, the unit council. We are here because we love the New York Times and because workers are the heart of the New York Times. We are here because we know the New York Times is nothing without its guilt and every last one of us deserves to earn a livable wage and to receive the benefits that we deserve. So what are we asking for in our contract? We want a 65,000 salary floor for all guild positions. Let me tell you, I know what it's like to work at a newspaper and not make enough to pay your bills. I worked two jobs until I was 30 years old. I reported at my local newspaper, and then I had to sell mattresses on nights and weekends just to make ends meet. I loved my job, but we shouldn't have to struggle financially to work at a place like the New York Times, no matter what position we hold at this institution. A floor like this for all of our colleagues, my friends at the security desk, the news assistants that make all of this run, who give their physical, mental, and emotional to uh, space to this place every day, that kind of floor will go a long way toward ensuring all of our unit members get the livable wage they deserve and can live in the city. Yeah. Yeah. So let's be 
be real, it will cost this prosperous company very little for all of our employees to make a livable wage. If you compare the cost of our proposal to the $150 million approved for stock buybacks this year, then we know that we have the money to do this for our lowest paid employees. Yes, we do. Because this is also the truth. When this paper struggled, all of us had to share in its austerity. Yes. So when this paper is doing well, the people who work hard every day to make this place a global phenomenon deserve to share in its success. This speech is longer than I remember it being. I'm going to try to wrap it up. The other big issue, which of course is core to me uh, and the work that I do, is we are asking that a committee on diversity be established to identify groups underrepresented at the company and formulate recommendations for hiring. Our company rejected our proposal for a committee that also looks at management positions in the cases where they directly oversee guild staff. Listen. A diversity initiative that doesn't touch management is not a diversity initiative. And the fact that our management team at the bargaining table has yet to confirm and work to correct the guild's finding on racial disparities in our employment and performance evaluation system, it becomes clear that this is about more than just a contract. Yes. What we are asking is that every member of our guild be treated fairly, be judged on their merits, and be paid their worth. Yeah. A fair contract is a statement that the company can make all of us, its workers, present and future, people who are proud to work at this institution. It's about paying people wages to make it possible to live in New York City and work for this esteemed newspaper without needing a financial safety net or personal family wealth, which many of us do not have. The New York Times management says they can't offer us any more than what they've offered us because they are thinking about the longevity of the company. Trust me, no one is thinking more about that than us. By investing in us, the very people who make the company's product so excellent, that is how you truly demonstrate a commitment to our longevity. So I stand with all of you who are here demanding a contract now that reflects that, and I couldn't leave this microphone with also without also declaring my solidarity with the 48,000 academic workers at the University of California on track right now. with the academic workers at the new school on strike right now. And declaring my solidarity with all union workers who are fighting to improve the working conditions for all of their colleagues in solidarity. Thank you. Give it up for Nicole! I want to I shout out I want to shout out some people who are here today who are who have been on a picket line for about I think over a month now. They flew up from Pittsburgh. There are workers here from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Where are you? Let's give it up for them. We are in solidarity with our colleagues in Pittsburgh. At this time, I want to bring up to you someone who um, I consider a friend and I consider a mentor as well in union work. Susan DiCarava, our New York local president.
Foundation. And I know how much all of you value the work that you do. That commitment is the exact reason why the only way the company can properly invest in this company is by investing in each and every one of you. So on behalf of your 5,000 colleagues in newsrooms across this great city of ours, and on behalf of all of our colleagues across the country, and especially our Times Tech colleagues who just walked out to join us, So our union, the News Guild CWA, is a strong and fighting union. We're actually one of the fastest growing unions in the country right now, and that's because of everyone out here. You are the union. And our union, what we build together, is the strongest when we fight together. What happens when we fight? We win. What happens when we fight? We win. And that fight is growing every single day. Day. Standing with us, maybe not here, but all across the continent are 27,000 News Guild members standing with us. And we're joined by our parent union, the Communications Workers of America, with hundreds of thousands of workers there. CWA! 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 CWA. The entire New Guild is watching and supporting this fight. From Toronto, to San Juan, to Los Angeles, to Pittsburgh, to Fort Worth, Minneapolis, Seattle. We are in the second week, y'all, of a strike in Fort Worth, Texas. Let's, Texas. Let's give it up for the folks in Fort Worth. And as Bill said earlier, we have been on strike in Pittsburgh since October. We're fighting for affordable health care and, and health insurance and a reversal of the legally imposed conditions. We have been striking, uh, we've got striking guild members right here. We already shouted out to Aaron and Natalie, but let's do it again! And we don't want to go on strike, but management isn't listening to us. This is the bravest thing that we can do. By withholding our labor, we are sending a clear message. They can't just give out stock dividends and buybacks like candy to shareholders and not give us a fair share. We are done making concessions in this union. Am I right? Are we done? We are done. Our job is to hold power to account, and today we do that right here at the New York Times. And we will do that every single day, because when we fight, we win! Thank you. Thank you, John. So, as you just heard, and you know, your colleagues across the News Guild and newsrooms across this country understand the value of your work because they do it too. And so we're all here today to let the New York Times executives know that there is no New York Times without your labor. Yeah. Each and every one of you, from the security guards who keep us safe, to the, to the advertising folks that sell the ads that keep this great enterprise going, yeah. to your friends in the Times Tech Guild and at Wirecutter, single newsroom worker from casual to correspondent, we are all here today because your labor is an investment in the mission of the New York Times. And now the New York Times needs to invest in you. I want to make something, I want to make something really clear here. It didn't have to be this way. We know that. Times management over the past 20 months had many opportunities, thanks to your amazing, stellar, 
bargaining committee. Let's hear it for them. They had the opportunity to give us proposals that address your real and immediate needs and concerns. Now they need to know that they need to make better choices yeah. or else they won't be able to issue double dividends to their stockholders. They won't be able to do $150 million in, in stock buybacks. $150 million, by the way, which would have paid for the entirety of our contract. They won't be able to increase executive compensation by over 30%. They can't do it without your labor. We are stakeholders too. And whether we're in the newsroom or in the lobby, whether we're in the street or at the bargaining table, we know our worth and we are here today to demand our fair share. I learned something from our friends at Teamsters Local 804 last year during the Condé strike. And I want to give a shout out to them. These are the folks who pledged not to cross our picket line today. These are the UPS drivers who said not today. They told us that when they pull up to their negotiations, when they pull up to the bargaining table, they don't settle for crumbs. They bring their knife, their fork, and they don't leave the table till they have a full plate. So guess what? Get your utensils out, get your tableware ready, because we are not leaving the table until we get a full plate and our fair share. It's been said before, much more eloquently, by Nicole and so many others who are going to be speaking today, but the New York Times is all of you. You are the people who breathe life into the Grey Lady, and you give it the capacity to reach millions of people around the globe. Meredith and AG must pay the bill that's due for two years of work without pay for a pandemic, covering racial and social injustice and a pandemic and through astronomical rises in the cost of living. They got paid. You should get paid. Shareholders. Shareholders were not protecting the newsroom. Shareholders were not selling ads. Shareholders were not reporting on the news. You know who was? You were. And you do it with honor and integrity and commitment and ethics and loyalty to journalism to your professions, and to the readers. And you do it every single day without fail, except today. <laughs> because today, today we're telling the New York Times we won't allow them to take advantage of your loyalty. Without the work of our members at the News Guild of New York, without the work of all the workers, frankly, at the Times, this place is an empty building. It's a blank page, and it's a company that's not living up to its values unless we demand that they do so. We know they can do better. Let's make sure they know they can do better. So we're here today to tell the New York Times what we want. So what do we want? And when do we want it? Yeah. What do we want? Yeah. When do we want it? Yeah. And who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? Union power. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you, Susan and John. Give it up for Susan and John! <laughs> Next, I want to bring up our controller, Brad Lander. Give it up for Brad Lander! Show me what democracy looks like! This is what democracy looks like! 
Show me what solidarity looks like. Show me what a union looks like. I'm New York City Comptroller Brad Lander, and I am so proud to be out in solidarity with you today. Normally, by this time of day, uh, I would have taken the blue wrapper off the paper that hit my stoop at 6 a.m. and enjoyed it over breakfast. I would have listened to the daily in the shower, I'll admit it. Uh, I would, on my uh, way into work, have opened the core app uh, and gone through the front section, the metro and business, and yes, I probably would have played Wordle. Uh, I have not done any of those things today because I don't cross picket lines. But I've got to tell you, it was also a powerful reminder of what the 1,100 workers do for me and for the customers of the New York Times every single day. It's the journalists and staff of the Times who add value to our lives in just extraordinary ways. Like, you create value out of your hard work. That's what this company is. This company is a vehicle for some brilliant and talented and creative folks to create content that adds enormous value to my life personally and all of our lives. So first, it's on behalf of avid Times readers and listeners and consumers, I want to say thank you to all of you for the work you do every day and bring solidarity from your readers and listeners. But I'm not out here today only as a customer. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm also out here actually as an investor and shareholder because the New York City Pension Funds, representing the retirement security of nurses and teachers and crossing guards and secretaries, they own $25 million worth of stock in the New York Times company. And I gotta tell you this, investors and customers they don't want a company that refuses to bargain in good faith with its workers. They don't want a company that makes you stay 20 months at the bargaining table. They don't want a company that refuses to pay workers what they're worth. And they don't want a company that won't bargain honestly about the diversity of its workforce. That last one really struck me because you know what? Diversity, equity, and inclusion is not a brand strategy. It is a fundamental compact with your workforce about what you believe fairness and opportunity generally, uh, genuinely looks like. And you can't say, that's not an issue for the bargaining table. That's something that management will handle on its own uh, with its branding department uh, or with its shareholders. So I just want to say I really appreciate it. It is new for workers to say, you know what? Diversity, equity, inclusion, they are fundamental union and workforce issues. And we're demanding that they be part of negotiations. That's how we create and share value. And so I wanna give credit to you for organizing and demanding it and putting it right on the table. And I wanna say investors and shareholders and customers don't want a company that refuses to do that. Um, I recognize that it's scary to walk out, and I really want to honor that. You know, I think some people out in the media might think, oh, it's like fun for workers, and we're fired up out here. There's great energy, but look, it is, um, it's frightening. You know, a lot of you are folks who are temps, who are newer workers, um, who are uh, lower paid, who don't have maybe as much confidence. And so I just want to say thank you for your courage in all of you who signed on and all of you who are out here today. Um, it's encouraging to hear your solidarity from this podium, to hear your journalists stand up together with and recognize the work of the security guards, of the folks who do the tech work, of the folks who make this place run. And I just want to expand that a little bit because uh, I love seeing your solidarity with the News Guild who are doing some badass organizing all across the sector, down at the New Yorker and Condé Nast and all over the country. I love your solidarity with the Communications Workers of America. I wore my red today. Um, and it's great to be here with Dennis Trainer Because New York Times journalists in solidarity with the folks that lay the cable that make the modern telecommunications industry run, that's what solidarity looks like. Because you know what? 
it's not just at the New York Times that you're fighting. We can build an economy where workers are respected and paid what they are, are, are owed. We can build an economy where diversity, equity, and inclusion aren't just buzzwords, but where they're a fundamental part of the companies and the workplaces that we are building. And we can build that all throughout the economy. And you know what? That will be really fantastic for customers. That will be really rewarding for investors and shareholders, for those nurses and, and firefighters who depend on growing value of just like the kind that you create. So I again want to say thank you because the 1,100 of you that signed and all of you are out here today, you're not only out here for your own contract and for your own jobs, you are out here building a sector and building an economy that works for all of us. Thank you so very much. Proud to be out uh, in solidarity with you. Hoping to get back to being able to play Wordle again soon. Thank you so much. Brad Lander, give it up for Brad Lander. I just want to make sure everyone understands that the 1,100 people, over 1,100 people, who signed a pledge to walk out today, everyone here on the sidewalk who works for the New York Times, we're not here on a sick day. We're not here taking a vacation day. We are getting docked a day's pay to be out here to fight for the rights of all of our union members. Right. It is very important that you understand that. And we didn't have to be here, as was said before. It is another example of the bad way that Times Management has managed this whole fiasco. They have chosen for us to be here. They have chosen for us to lose a day's pay when we could have settled on a contract a long time ago. So I just want you to understand that. Next up is our contract action team member, Gill member, Tom Cotton. All right, thank, thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. First off, I want to thank Bill Baker our unit chair, whose leadership and steadiness through this entire process has been awe-inspiring. And I think I speak on behalf of everybody when I say we are enormously grateful for everything you have done. Now, speaking for myself, uh, this summer I marked my 25th anniversary at the New York Times. I started working here in 1997. To mark that event, the company sent me, Bill, you want to hold that up? That, that is a tote bag, a New York Times tote bag that the company sent me. Um, uh, it's a nice, I don't want to hate on the tote bag, it's a very nice tote bag, I, I do appreciate it. Uh, but as I said in my email to AG and Meredith when we all sent that mass email over the summer, but when I sent my email to AG and Meredith over the summer, where we said we really want a contract, I said, I don't need knickknacks, I need a raise. <laughs> over the years, we have made a lot of give backs to the company to make sure it stayed in operation. About a dozen years ago, we agreed to a 5% pay cut in exchange for 10 furlough days. That helped the company out. In 2012, they killed the old pension plan, which was better than the pension plan we have now. We agreed to 2% raises virtually every year going forward in that. In 2017, we agreed to kick more money into the health plan to pay higher deductibles and higher co-pays when it looked like the health plan was going to run out of money. We have been doing all of this over the years to help the company out. Now the company this year has made an operating profit of, I believe it's more than $300 million. Am I right about that? 
they're do they've raised the executive pay, they're doing the stock buybacks, they've raised the dividends to give shareholders more money. We don't begrudge them that, at least I don't, but I do want my fair share and I think we all deserve it. When I started at this company in 1997, it was mostly a newspaper. And there were signs in the bullet, on bulletin boards in the newsroom talking about our mission statement. The mission statement of the New York Times was, every day we want to produce the best newspaper in the world. Now you would say, we want to day in and day out be the best news organization in the world. We do that. And we are just asking now the company merely to give us what we deserve and what we have earned over the years. Thank you very much. Give it up for Tom. Next up to the podium is our CWA District 1 Pre Vice President, Dennis Trainer. The CWA in the house. We're all CWA, and when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters and union family. My name is Dennis Trainer, and I'm the Vice President of CWA District 1. And on behalf of 150,000 members in District 1, I'm here to stand in solidarity with all of you. I want to give a huge shout out to your President Susan and to John Worthing. We're in this together. We're all CWA, and when we fight, we win! I want to tell you a little story about CWA and about strikes. I know it's pretty hard going out on strike. I've been there a few times. In 1971, when I first joined the New York Telephone Company, I was on strike for seven and a half months. Welcome to CWA, I said. I became a student that day. In 1989, I was on strike for four months. And in 2016, we were on strike against Verizon for seven weeks. Well, let me tell you about the strike in 2016. We were on strike for seven weeks. We finally settled the strike down in Washington, D.C., in front of the uh, Secretary of Labor. And the CEO of Verizon was at that meeting with us when he settled. And he told us at that meeting, I didn't realize that I was fighting the whole union movement when I took you on. And that's what I want to tell you right now. You may be 1100, and as one of the speakers said earlier, you're like a small little town. You're a big city. And CWA is behind you. The labor movement is entirely behind you. You will have Mario Salento from the president of the AFL-CIO speak in a few minutes. I'm sure he'll tell you that the whole entire AFL of New York State is behind you. But what's so important is that New York Times will know the whole labor movement is behind you. For over 20 months, you've been bargaining in good faith. And what this company is doing to you is outrageous. For almost two years, you have worked without a raise. This has to stop now. We have to make that demand. We want a contract, and as Susan said, a full plate. It's time that the New York Times gives us a fair share, gives us a fair contract. The company is selling Wall Street what a successful operation they have. They're paying the executives millions of dollars in salaries and benefits, and you know, they're not willing to give you a fair share. Again, this is outrageous. Are we gonna let them get away with this? 
What are we gonna do when we fight? We fight! That's right. You deserve better. Because you do the work. What makes the time such a success and such a respected institution is in the newsroom. It's in the executive staff. Journalists, reporters, columnists, editors. You're the best of the best. And you deserve a fair share. All workers deserve a fair share. It's shameful and a disgrace for an institution like the New York Times, which holds itself to the highest standards to treat its workers so poorly. I commend you for your bravery. Workers at the Times have not walked out, have not walked out since 1978. But you know what? You are in great company. Workers are fed up with corporate greed and fighting yeah. back. Yeah. And again, when we fight, we win. when we fight, we win. I stand with you, the C CWA, the 150 members in New York, in uh, District 1 stand with you, all the CWA stands with you, and the labor movement stands with you. We're all in this together. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Give it up for Dennis Grader! So, I want to I wanna just shout out some folks who are here today. Some of our union colleagues. CWA, we what? RWDSU, where are you? Shout out to RWDSU. Harper's Union, UAW 2110. The Freelance Solidarity Project. Yeah. The Coalition of Labor Union Women. Yeah. Teamsters Local 804. Yeah. The Mailers Union. Yeah. New York State AFL-CIO. Yeah. And right here, when we left this building in March of 2020, Dean and DeLuca had closed, and there was no one there. Since we've come back, there's an Amazon Starbucks over here right now, on the corner, right here, 8th Avenue and 40th Street. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> we want to give a shout out to Workers United. Go home now. Ah!